the Berea Seventh-day Adventist Church, where once again we have gathered to come into the house of the Lord. We pray that today you will be blessed as we fellowship, as we worship, as we praise our God, and as we take a moment to celebrate our wonderful mothers all around this world, and particularly those of our church. May God bless you and fill you with his presence.
Good morning and happy Sabbath. We are so grateful that we have this opportunity to come this morning to the throne of grace. This morning it is my privilege and honor to say happy Mother's Day to all those who are watching around the globe, watching in our community, and especially those within our church. I know that God has a special blessing for you this morning and at this time we just want to say thank you we want to give God praise and honor this morning so I invite you to come with me to the throne of grace as we bring our petition our praise and thanksgiving the songwriter asks does Jesus care when my heart is pain too deeply for mirth and song. As the burdens press and the cares distress and the way grows weary and long. And the answer comes, oh yes, he cares. I know he cares. His heart is touched with my grief. When the days are weary and the long nights are dreary, I know my Savior cares. I invite you, wherever you are, just to bow your heads, close your eyes, as we come before the throne of grace. Most gracious God, we come before your throne this morning just to acknowledge that you are sovereign. Father God, we know that we serve a God who sits high and looks low and is concerned about all the affairs of man. Father God, you were able to speak into the nothingness of our atmosphere. And you spoke and worlds were formed. Father God, we praise you for who you are. And we know, Father God, that you love your very own. This morning I ask, Father God, for forgiveness of sin. We thank you for your son Jesus, who has died, that we can come boldly before the throne, petitioning your grace and your mercy. Father, thank you for your shed blood. We ask, Father God, that you will cleanse us from within. I pray, Father God, that you remove any forces, any darkness, that will hinder our prayers from reaching you this morning. Lord, we cry aloud, knowing that your ear is inclined to our call. And so, Father, we thank you for what you've done on Calvary's tree to make sure that we can come boldly. Father God, it is a special weekend as we celebrate mothers all around. Father, we understand that you love us with an everlasting love. I pray, Father, that you will be with all those who have cried out for their children. Lord, we're living in perilous times. And as we go on our knees and we petition you for our children, we know, Father God, that you are working everything out according to your perfect will. So I'm asking, Lord, wherever our children are at this moment, that you will go right to their side, Lord, and that you will continue to do a perfect work. You who have started a good work in us will see it to completion. So I bring the petition of those mothers, Father God, who are crying out for their children this morning. You long for our children, dear Father God, to be saved 
So you said you will contend with those who will contend with us. You will save our children. So, Father God, I pray this morning that you will be with our children. I pray for those mothers who have lost their children this year. Father God, it is deep. It is hurtful. It is painful. Their tears are long. But we know, Father, that you are the hope, the everlasting hope. So I pray for comfort this morning. I specifically pray for Sister Griffiths. I pray for Sister Harkis. Father God, you know them by name. Father, I pray that you will go to their very home, Lord, and that you will breathe peace into their environment. Speak peace to their heart. And Father God, help us to remember that you're coming soon and you're coming back to deliver. Father God, I pray for those who had to bury their mothers this year. Father God, I pray that you will also be with those who are mourning the loss of their mothers. Father, you are not too far. You, do, you understand our hurt. And so, Father, I pray for those this morning. Go right to their hearts, Father God, and breathe into them love. Breathe into them strength. Breathe into them hope, Father God. I pray, Father, for the sick among us. There are those, Father God, who are ailing. I pray, Father God, that you will go to their very bedside. Father God, by your stripes, we are healed. And so, Father God, I'm asking right now that you will go into their homes. You will go into the hospital rooms. Father God, you will go to their bedside. And Father God, you will touch them from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet. I pray especially this morning for Sister Jackson. Go right into that hospital room, Father God. Infuse into her body life everlasting. Father God, heal her. Touch her cells. Father God, I know you are able. We serve a God who does miraculous things. So we call upon you this, Father. We call upon you this morning. Father God, there are those who have been afflicted. And so, Father, I am asking right now that you will touch them, that you will heal them. I also come with praise reports because I've gotten the text messages and the calls saying, thank you, Jesus, for your healing balm. Thank you, Jesus, for your grace and your mercy. Father God, we know that you are able to do exceedingly, abundantly above all we can ever ask or imagine. So, Father, we thank you and we praise you. Father, we put this service into your keeping. We ask that you be with each participant, the musician, the music, Father God, those who are working on the sound system. Father God, I'm asking that you will walk up and down these aisles. And, Father God, that you will do a mighty work. Your people are listening. Your people want to hear a word from you, Father God. So I'm asking right now that you move like you never moved before. I bring before you the speaker of the hour, Pastor Jarvis. I'm asking you that you will touch him from on high. Father God, speak through him. Help, Father God, that what the words he speak will not be his own, but we come directly from your throne. We thank you, Lord, because we know that you are a God who is coming back, coming back very soon. You will burst the clouds. You will come forth with a great triumphant sound. You will call those who have gone to sleep. You will call those who have been faithful. And you will say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Enter the joy of my salvation. So we thank you, Father God, and we look forward to that day. And Father God, I ask that you will help us to remain humble. Help us, Father God, to remain faithful so that when you come, 
we can hear you. And Father God, we can go with you that which you've gone to prepare for us. Thank you, Father God, for what you've done. Thank you, Father God, for what you will continue to do for us. And I pray, Father God, that you will continue to be with your people. In the precious name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. Good morning and happy Sabbath. I hope you guys are having a great Sabbath in your house today. Our first song of the day uh, will be You Are My Strength.
says, even though we couldn't see a way, you found a way, you made a way.
backs were against the wall And it looked as if it was over you You made a way And we're standing here Only because you made a way Oh, I could. Well, maybe just a bite. Brought the pie.
and God alone reveals the joys of our eternal home. He will be our one desire, and our hearts will never tire of God and God alone. You don't trust me? No, I mean, I want to trust you, I just don't. <laughs> I have an exercise that I think will really help you. Oh, okay. Stand here and face this direction. Mm -hmm. Now, do you trust me? Uh, no, I just said I don't trust you. All right, well, this is all part of the exercise. Oh, all right. right. Okay. Whenever I ask you if you trust me, you say, yes, Jesus, I trust you. Even though I don't. It's practice. Okay. So, do you trust me? <laughs> yes, Jesus, I trust you. Now. Fall back. Are you going to catch me? Don't worry about that part. Okay, that's the part I'm worried about. <laughs> you can do this, okay? Just trust me. Trust you. Fall back. Okay, well, Jesus, I trust Good. you. Yes, I do trust you. I'm going to fall okay. back. Woo! Oh, okay. <laughs> that's great. Uh, okay. Let's try this again. Just face this direction and keep your feet planted, okay. all right? Do you trust me? <sighs> yes. Jesus, I trust you. Now, fall back. Okay, I'm gonna do it. All right. I'm really gonna do it. <laughs> okay. Good. Ah! Oh, Jesus, you really caught yeah, me! Yeah. I didn't think you were gonna catch me, but you did! Oh, that That's was great! Nice. That was great! You're ready for level two! Level two, here yes. I come, baby! Woo! Whoa! <laughs> Whoa. Okay, hold it. <laughs> oh, you know what? You're too close. You need to move back. Ah, right. Yeah, okay. <laughs> This one's a little bit different, Laura. Oh, okay. Uh, stand here. Uh huh. But face me. Woo! Forward fall. Okay. I can do that. Wait. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. Um, wait for my signal. Oh, right. The Jesus signal. <laughs> yes, the okay. Jesus signal. Do you trust me? Yes, Jesus. I trust you so much. Good. Fall back. <laughs> That's awesome. It is awesome. <laughs> Especially when you do it. <laughs> Seriously? Of course. Okay, Jesus. I don't know if you noticed this, but there is nobody over there. I know it looks that way to you. It looks that way. It is that way. You can do this, Laura. Just trust me and fall back. Jesus, I can't do that. We can do it together. I can't. You can. I won't. Gracious God, we invite your Holy Spirit to be our guide and our teacher. I pray that as we open your words, that Lord, you will transform our hearts, renew our minds, revive our faith. Speak, Lord, so that we might hear from you in Jesus' name, amen. 
I've entitled today's message, The Wilderness. There's a story that was told about two college students. While they were in school, there was a famous lecturer by the name of Roger Ingenstall. He was noted because he was a skeptic, an opponent against religion. And so it was that he went and he was lecturing and the students went to hear his discourse. Following the meeting, the two students were walking home. And one of the students remarked to the other student and said, well, I think he made it clean, clear. Christianity does not have a leg to stand on. To which the other student responded, I hear what you're saying, but until he can explain to me my mother's life, then I still choose to serve my mother's God. We realize that as we will open God's word today, that the experience of our faith is oftentimes passed down to us through the example of our mothers. It is a time when society has set aside to recognize the mothers of this land and all of their hard work and contributions. And I believe it is of utmost importance that we celebrate our mothers. This time of year for me is a hard time. Because my mother who passed would also not only be celebrating Mother's Day, but we would also be celebrating her birthday. But it reminds me all the more of the import of mothers and the impression that they leave on our lives, the, the ability for them to be able to affect the, 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 the children and the people of society. And we're reminded from generation to generation as I look at my wife and other spiritual mothers that continue to fill our country, our land with hope, I am blessed that today God's word highlights the importance of mothers. But we recognize that it's not an easy journey to walk as a mother. For the same way that the word of God tells us about mothers, he also uses the imagery of the woman as a symbol for his church. And so in today's message, I dare to suggest to you that we can find hope in looking at God's plan for mothers. And we can see how if we follow the examples of the woman that we will look at in Revelation chapter 12, that we will find how we can experience the victory and the power of God if we but trust him. And so if you will, I know you're at home, but get your Bibles out. I invite you to turn with me to the book of Revelation, the last book of the Bible, and we will look at chapter 12 verses 1 through 6 revelation the 12th chapter verses 1 to 6 and the word of god says and there appeared a great wonder in heaven a woman clothed with the sun and the moon and under her feet and upon her head a crown of 12 stars and he be and she being with child cry travailing in birth and pain to be delivered and there appeared another wonder in heaven and behold a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head and his tail drew a third part of the stars in heaven and did cast them to the earth and the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child and so, as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule the nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. And verse 6 says, And the woman fled into the wilderness, where she hath a place prepared of God. 
and they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. As we look at this passage of scripture, I believe it's important for us to note that first of all, that God describes the image of the woman that represents his church, his people. It is fitting that God chooses the image of a woman. For we realize that, that women are blessed of the Lord. You see, one of the things that it is important to remember is that while in the world we, we often tend to look at people and women based on what it is that they accomplish, what the Lord does is he simply uh, endows to women a worth and a value. He lets us know that his women, his creation, I believe the crowning jewel of God's creation, is without doubt or without question far more precious than we could ever imagine. In fact, I believe that the word of God likens correctly the value of a woman when he describes in Proverbs, the, 31st, uh, the 30th, 31st chapter, verse 10, where he says, Who can find a virtuous wife? For her worth is far above rubies. You see, he goes on to tell us down after he describes all the list of characteristics that define and identify a woman. He says that charm is deceitful. And beauty is passing, but a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands, and let her own works praise her in the gates. You see, the Lord rightly demonstrates that in the personhood of a woman, that it is not simply the exterior beauty of a woman, but it is that which is within her that allows for her to be a true representative of God's church, of God's people. In fact, throughout the chapter, and if I had time, I would read all of it for you. But it lets you know that a woman who knows God values her abilities and intelligence. It relates and reveals to us that this woman of God sets about her work with energy and with anticipation that she has a good attitude and doesn't complain as she sets about the task of caring for her family and her home. It tells us that this woman is compassionate and reaches out to the less fortunate and she treats herself with respect. It tells us that this woman is able to give godly wisdom and instruction to others. She honors Jesus with her life. In fact, she is an encouragement to her husband, her children, her friends, her community, because that's what God put in her. You see, we have miscorrectly understood what the word of God says when he said to man, I would give you a help meet. We have wrongly interpreted this to mean that it has lowered her value to be a helper to man. But in fact, it is that she is to be a compliment. She is to be a compliment to man. It means that while there were certain attributes of God that were revealed through a man, there were different and equally important and distinctive characteristics of a woman that allows for the image of God in humanity to be complete and fulfilled. You see, the enemy of God recognized that because in this image in Revelation chapter 12, it describes how she is beauty crowned with the sun and the moon and the stars. But the enemy of God now goes to attack her. We realize that there emerges in the midst of this woman's life trials and pain. That there comes an attack from the enemy, but it is no ordinary attack. It is a spiritual battle, a spiritual warfare, if you please. For the Bible tells us that the dragon was angry and at war with God. And he took out this war not simply because of the woman herself, but because it was his way of getting at God. 
You see, if the enemy can destroy the faith and the confidence and the trust of the woman, then he would succeed in destroying humanity. You see, there is a spiritual attack, a, a spiritual warfare that comes against God's people represented by the woman. And that is why when we see the women in our society moving around with strength and with courage and with faith, despite all they're going through, we ought to be reminded of what we as God's people ought to be. But the enemy is relentless. For he went after her with a vengeance, causing her great pain and great hurt. Too often we see the, the tears of a mother and the anguish of a mother as they watch their communities and their children suffer at the hand of evil all around them. And it requires great strength, but we realize that we will not be able to overcome this battle by flesh or by blood, by, by human powers. But it requires a godly woman. That is why I believe that Proverbs 31 uh, highlights these characteristics because it is the godliness of a woman that will allow for her to transcend and overcome the wiles of the devil. You see we realize that we are in a spiritual warfare. And over these past several weeks, it has been difficult to watch the heart-wrenching cries of mothers who have passed leaving children weeping and saddened at the loss of a mother. It has been heart-wrenching to watch mothers losing their children. But we realize that this battle that we fight is one that is a spiritual battle. And so today, I want to challenge and encourage every woman within the sound of my voice that as a representative of God's people, that it is now that we must lean on him the most. The video that preceded this uh, sermon was one that showed a barrenness, a, a vast land. I, I call it a wilderness, if you please. And when we were asked to trust God, that woman refused. But I dare to suggest to you today that the cost of refusing to trust God, even when it seems that we are abandoned to a wilderness, is too high for our children for our communities, for our church, for our society, for our planet. You see, it is a model that we must follow. As we will look in this passage of scripture, we will realize that we are introduced to a couple of women in the wilderness. We have this beautiful woman who was attacked by the enemy. And we will see conversely in a few moments another woman in the wilderness. But each one of these women had to make a choice. Their choice would either cause them to trust and be dependent on God, and I will suggest they will come out victorious. Or they will be in the wilderness and give over to the, to the, the law of the jungle, if you please. They will allow life to sweep them over and they will be transformed from the natural beauty and power God has endowed them with to something that is unimaginable and unrecognizable. It is a spiritual warfare of no means. And while we are seeing all that is happening around us today, while we are, are seeing that there is, is uncertainty when it comes to how we will provide for our families, what the future hopes, ma making sure that we are keeping our families safe and secure, it is now more than ever that even though it might seem like there is a vast wilderness in front of us, that we must rely on God. For you see, the Bible tells us that while this woman was attacked by the enemy, that the woman was protected and nurtured in the wilderness. But let me introduce you to the woman that did not make that choice. If you turn with me to the book of Revelation, 
Revelation chapter 17, I want to introduce us to another woman who was also in the wilderness. But yet her reliance was not upon God. She did not depend on spiritual things, but rather she depended on human ingenuity, on, on her, 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 her street smarts, if you please. And it did something to her nature. Read with me, beginning in verse 3. So he carried me, this is John, uh, being taken away in vision. So he carried me away in the spirit, into the wilderness. And I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And verse 5 says, and upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. You see, we realize that as John went into the wilderness, he saw a woman who had made a different choice. She had become burdened by the cares of the world. She had become overwhelmed by what it was, the challenges she was facing. She, she became uh, pressed down and worn out by the attacks of the devil. You see, the enemy will try to get you to give up what he cannot take away. He will try to wear you down and wear you out so that you will find yourself in a wilderness but not being nurtured by God. In fact, you will turn to other things and other sources for your strength. But there is only one place your strength comes from. And this woman decided that she would find other things to, to, to cover her pain. Sometimes we go through stuff and we want to hide what we look like. You, you know, I, I know it's an amazing thing as I've been on Zoom and there are many people hiding their faces today. They find those glamour shots, if you please, and they put it up on their, their screenshot so that you will see that beautiful, perfect picture. But if they were to come live on camera with the beauty shops being closed, nails having been done, weaves having been redone, they, they may not look as pretty as they would like to feel. But what we must realize is that the beauty that comes when we are with God is not one that is exacerbated by what's on the outside, for in fact, it comes on the inside. In fact, if we contrast these two women, the first woman is clothed in natural beauty. The beauty that is within her shines out so much so that she is compared with the beauty of the sun and the stars and the majesty of the moon, that which God created with his own hand. But this woman has tried to cover her pain, decked herself out in all kinds of jewels and makeup, things that might give a form of beauty, but it is only superficial and artificial. We must not allow for us in this time of trial to, to, to try to cover our pain and our anguish with superficial things, for ultimately it led this woman on a path where she became embittered. She believed a lie and now transmitted a lie because we must realize that the values of our society are transmitted through that of the woman, through her teachings, through her values, through her influence. The power of our influence is one that we must not relinquish. Because when we relinquish it, the devil will use us and use us up. I know it's hurtful. I know that you are filled with pain. I know that you don't see tomorrow, but God doesn't ask you to see the end of the wilderness. He asks for you to trust him in the wilderness. And inevitably it shows that this woman must have at some point become embittered because she turned her anger and her wrath against the people of God, so much so that the Bible describes that she was drunk with the blood of the saints. 
It is a hard thing when life embitters us. I want to challenge us during this time of COVID-19. I know you are probably sick and tired of being in your house. You are probably sick and tired of trying to get kids to do schoolwork when they are at home. You are sick and tired of trying to figure out how you will put food on your table and still keep yourself safe. But through it all, I want to encourage us not to allow ourselves to be given over to this bitterness. Because you see, there is a reason why the enemy of God attacks the woman. He didn't just attack her by happenstance. He could have chosen to attack the man. But if we go back to our scripture in Revelation chapter 12, we will see that there was something that she possessed that he was after. There was something that this woman carried in her that if allowed to come to its natural fruition, that he would be defeated almost immediately. If we go back, we take a look at verse 2, which tells us that this woman was, was being with child. She cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. But it also goes on to tell us in verse 5. In verse 5 it says, And she brought forth a man-child, who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. You see, the unique description about this woman that the Bible describes is that she was carrying a child in her womb. Now, I did a little research, and it was interesting to note that in her womb uh, that she carried the hope of the world. In her womb, even though that there was sadness and despair all around, the child that was within her, when he would be born, he would rule with a rod of iron. He would take full control of all the chaos. And he would defeat the enemy. And I will suggest to you that that is why the enemy is after the woman. He tries to destroy what is in her, what she carries in her womb, so that by destroying it, he would destroy the rest of us. Now, you may wonder and question, why, why how does this relate to women today in the 21st century? For we understood that the child being talked about was Jesus. The child that, that she carried in her womb was the Messiah, the one who would come to die and take away the sins of the world. We must understand and recognize that the imagery that is used is one that still draws off of, of, of realities that are applicable today. If we watch our society, we notice that there is an upturn and an uptick in violence. If we watch our society, we, we note that there is a callousness towards human life. We realize that people are more observed with, uh, are concerned with things and not people. More concerned about gathering and not giving and taking care of those around. In fact, I will say it plain and simple. Our society is selfish and self-centered. Now, one of the amazing things that has been wonderful to see is during this period of crisis, we are seeing that humanity is returning to, to, the, to the good, good nature that God has in, in, endued us with and created us with so that we would reach out and care for one another. But this is in a time of crisis. The sad reality is once the crisis passed, we tend to go back to looking out for number one, and that's me. But God put something in a woman. When God created Eve, the attributes of God that are connected with his gentleness, his compassion, his goodness, his, his mercy, these are attributes that are innately in woman. Now, I, I know that, that there are some 
who may not be comfortable with the distinction that I make between how God created male and female. But we must remember that God did not make one above and another one lower. God made them different but equal. And the attributes given to a woman was to counterbalance the attributes of a man and so the totality of who God is could be seen. And so sometimes we tend to associate those characteristics as signs of weakness. But what we must remember is that our world would have probably destroyed itself ten times over without those attributes of kindness and compassion and mercy. Now the Hebrew word for compassion is in its root a word that is derived from the same root as womb. So in the Hebrew, when it talks about compassion, it talks about the womb. It is derived from the same word. You see, what it tries to communicate to us is that the, the concept of compassion and mercy and gentleness literally comes out and is birthed out of a woman. You see, if our society is going to continue to, 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 to thrive and, and to keep uh, uh, from destroying itself, then it is important to realize that these attributes are all important. And if the enemy could snuff out the power of a woman, uh, her compassion, her wisdom, her guidance, her strength, then God will destroy our children. And so the enemy is trying to get to the mother so he can get to the rest of us. But if we allow for this woman to be able to meet her full maturity, we see that just as the, the child who was born became the deliverer of the world, that so in this spiritual warfare that we will be overcomers. I want to encourage somebody today that as we are looking at what is going on around us, the Bible has told us that we are going to be victorious for the woman who made the choice to trust in God even though she was in a wilderness. The Bible says in verse 6 that she was protected and nurtured and I want somebody to be encouraged today that no matter what it is that you are going through no matter how difficult it seems no matter how many tears you have cried God will protect you and nurture you in the wilderness. God will never leave you nor forsake you. In fact when it seems man has abandoned you. The Bible says that the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are saved. When we are in the midst of a wilderness, God will cover us with eagle's wings. I like the imagery of an eagle. It is one of my favorite uh, creation. The image of an eagle, a mother eagle, is that which uh, flutters and, and watches over her children. She will stand guard over them day and night. She will ensure that no harm comes to them. You see, in this imagery, we are reminded that God will protect his children. I know you might be afraid of what tomorrow brings, but don't be afraid because God is already in tomorrow. And because God is in tomorrow, he asks for us to trust him. He asks for us to believe that he is a rewarder of those who will diligently seek him. He asks for us that when we are afraid, that we will lean on his bosom. For we realize that the symbol of the woman is a call to the church. That when we are alone in the wilderness of life, God will protect you and me. God will provide, even though it seems like we've lost our source of income, God is our provider. Even when it seems that our health is in jeopardy, God is our healer. Even though it seems like, 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 God, like we don't know where our next meal is coming from, God will provide. Our bread and our water shall be sure. You see, God lets us know that what he is asking of us in these times of crisis is what this woman did. Trust him and he will provide healing. Lean on him and he will protect us. Stay true to his word and God's word will not fail. 
I tell you that when we look at what God does, he shows us another picture. In Revelation, the 21st chapter, he shows us now a picture of the end. For you see, there were two women that made different choices. One to trust God and one to depend on human agencies. And as a result, the one that depended on self and human agencies became embittered. But the one who trusted in God, God kept her through the wilderness. You see, we can't be afraid of the wilderness that we face. God will be with us. And here is what he says about the end of the story in Revelation chapter 21, beginning at verse 2. It says, And I, John, saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he shall dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. You see, the Lord tells us that this woman who trusted him, he comes at the end of time, and he talks about his bride, this woman that has been prepared, ready to meet him. She shall come victorious. The Bible says that every tear that she has cried, he will wipe away every tear from her eyes. The sickness that she endured, that she will be restored to fullness of health. There shall be no more sickness. There shall be no more sorrow. No crying, no pain. Why? Because she trusted in God. And when she trusts in God, that child that was sent of a woman to be born to redeem man shall do what he does best and shall give us the victory. You see, it is for us to hold on. It is for us to believe that God will do what he says. I'm reminded of a story of a British prime minister. He described how it was that he came to grow to be the man that ultimately would be the head of state. He described that as a child, it was before he could remember anything. But the story was told to him over and over again that he would not be where he was today if it was not for his mother. If it was not for his mother who gave her life for him, for the story that was told to him is that he was traveling in his mother's arms as a little infant. And while they were traveling, there came an unexpected snowstorm, a blizzard. She lost sight and ultimately lost her way. She could not get to her destination. And after the snowstorm had passed, they saw a mound of snow. And when they uncovered it, they found that it was the body of his mother. But lo and behold, that when they moved her body, underneath her body was a living child. For this mother, while she was trying to find her way to safety, realized the peril that she was in. She was uncertain if she would make it, but she would do anything to make sure that her child would be safe. And so she took off her outer garment, her warm layer of clothing, and she took this infant child and swaddled him and wrapped him in this clothing. And when she had no more strength, when there was no more push in her body, it is recorded that she curled her body over the infant child, wrapped in this outer garment, and whatever heat was left in her body, she used it to secure her child. 
And when they found the body of this mother, the child that she carried in her arms were safe and secure. You see, God is just like that mother. We're traveling through a wilderness and storms will come. Heartache and pain will enter our lives. It may seem like we won't make it. It may seem like we will not reach our destination. But the Bible says that God so loved the world. He took off his divinity and he put on humanity. He wrapped himself in the garb of human flesh. And he came to this earth and he stretched his arms wide open on Calvary's tree. He wrapped us in his arms and allowed his shed blood to be our covering. For without the shedding of blood, there was no remission for sin. And like that mother, with the last breath in his body, he declared that this war against the enemy is finished. It means that he may still attack you, but he has no power. He may try to hurt you, but he shall not prevail. The weapon will form, but it shall not prosper. Because God's love covers us and enfolds us and holds us. And when the time shall come, when time shall be no more, the Bible tells us that we shall be born again. And because we are born again, that even though we die, yet shall we live. It means that there is no wilderness that can hold you. There is no pain that can keep you down. Even sickness and death are restrained only to this time. But when he comes again, hallelujah, when he comes again, Jesus shall pull his children from the wilderness and he shall declare that you are righteous and holy and just enter into my joy. The role of a mother is not simply related to her individual child, but it stands as a symbol to humanity to remind us that if we but trust God, future generations will survive. The story of Thomas Edison goes that his teacher sent a note to his mother and told his mother that this child is dumb and would not succeed. The mother wrote a note back to his teacher and said, you don't know my child, I will teach him myself. For those that don't recognize the name Thomas Edison, he is the one who went on to invent the light bulb and many other things. You see, God sees in us something we cannot see. He sees the potential that he has created in us. I have plans for you, says the Lord, to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. No matter the wilderness that you are in today, God has a future for you if you'll only trust him.
will I fear the terror by night? The God who governs angel armies has set encampments around me. Shall I fear? I will not fear the arrow by day, nor will I fear the terror by night. The God who governs angels' armies has set encampments around me. Whom shall I times I want to encourage you that though fear 
might be a part of everyday life. God invites for us to put our faith and our trust in him. Over the past several weeks, I've watched children funeralize mothers. I have been with mothers who have funeralized their children. I can see how despair can overwhelm your soul. But I want to invite you today, whether you're grieving, whether your loved one is right now in crisis, I want to invite you to find yourself in the arms of God. Allow him to pull you into the wilderness, not of fear, but of faith. Allow him to nurture you, to protect you, to minister to you. And though your weeping may endure for a night, I promise you that God has promised joy will come in the morning. I want to especially admonish our mothers. Hold strong in the Lord. Because as the woman stood as a symbol for God's people, you are a symbol to your home, to your neighborhood. You are a symbol on your job. You are a symbol for our society and we need you not to fake, but for you to simply put your trust in God. Cry in God's arms. Lean in his arms and let him strengthen you. I want to pray for you. Will you join me in prayer today? Every head is bowed, every eye is closed. Heavenly Father, you have seen the tears in the midnight hour. You have heard the anguish of mothers and families trying to figure out what comes next. Father, you see that there is a spiritual attack that is coming against households across this country. But Father, I'm asking that you will endow our mothers, you will endow our, our, our women with a strength that transcends this time, a strength that can only be found in you, a strength that says, I will trust my God in the midst of the wilderness. And so, Father, today, if somebody's heart needs mending because they've lost their mother, may you provide comfort for their weary soul. If a mother needs to be comforted because she's lost her child, may your peace Fill her heart today. And Father, as we see the example, may we as a people be resolved that no matter how the enemy comes at us, that we will trust you. Thank you, Lord, for answering our prayers. Thank you for hearing our cries. And Father, we will never leave your safety and your arms. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I pray that as we pray that prayer, that you are resolved to simply live for Jesus. Trust him. Obey his word. And I challenge you, dare to believe and you will see that God has a hope to fill your heart. May God bless you. Until next time, amen.
We pray that you are blessed by today's message and hope that you will continue your walk with God. Please make use of our website to download Bible studies or request prayer. God has something special in store for you. May God continue to bless you and dare to believe you will see that there is hope where you are. Good morning, boys and girls, and welcome to Berea Children's Village. So Sister Tolbert. Okay, so today's Mother's Day, so I think you should go and relax. And the children are taking over. The children are taking over today? Yeah. Because of Mother's Day? Mm-hmm. And I'm a mom? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Well, I'm going to go and sit down and enjoy our children's Mother's Day program. This is our Mother's Day card for all the mothers here that we got. Let's see who's first. Oh, Bailey. She is doing opening prayer. Bow your head and close your eyes. Dear Heavenly Father, I just want to say thank you for blessing us with another day of life and letting us be your real. Thank you for letting us see your glory and grace another day. Help us all to be obedient and be pure and always listen to your word. Please all our fathers, mothers, aunts, uncles, siblings, pray, be with them. Help them to be safe, help no danger and harm. Be with the mothers as it is going to be Mother's Day tomorrow. Help us all to respect them. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Next, it will be Desiree with our scripture reading. Hi, everyone. My name is Desiree, and I'm nine years old. Today, I'll be reading Proverbs 31, 25 to 29. This is the NLT version. She is clothed with strength and dignity, and she laughs without fear of the future. When she speaks, her words are wise, and she gives instructions with kindness. She carefully watches everything in her household and suffers nothing from laziness. Her children stand and bless her. Her husband praises her. There are many virtuous and capable women in the world, but you surpass them all. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. So my brother Jaden is going to come join me for a song. It is going to be called it's called Lord I Need You. Jaden? I confess, bowing here, I find my rest. Without you, I fall apart. You're the one that guides my heart. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you Every hour I need you My one defense My righteousness Oh God, how I need you Whispering runs deep your grace is more where grace is found is where you are where you are lord lord i am free holiness is christ in me lord i need you oh I Temptations come my way. 
Yeah, and I cannot stand, I'll fall on you. Jesus, you're my hope and stay. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour I need you. My word defends my righteousness. Oh, God. How I need you You're my one defense My righteousness Oh God, how I need you My one defense My righteousness Oh God how I need you. Hi, my name is Cindy and Matthew, and we are going to be singing what a beautiful name it is. Our Mother's Day tribute. Hey, hey, wasn't it Mother's Day this weekend? Oh yeah, you're right. Uh, what should we do? Something? Should we do something special for our mother? Uh, 
Uh, yeah, maybe like breakfast in bed or a card. Do you remember the time where our mom got sick of yeah. the coronavirus? Of course. Um, what do, do you remember what we did? Yeah, we covered ourselves in a garbage bag and gave her lots of hugs. We also gave her breakfast in bed. That's right. But what's something extra special for our why don't we go sit over there and talk about it? Remember that time when we were really worried about our mother being sick? Yes, I do. I was so worried. You were very worried. But you were worried too. Not as much as you were. I think my mom is a hero because she takes her time taking care of her patients with all types of diseases and problems. Yeah, you're right. She works really hard for us and the rest of the family. And I really appreciate all that she's done for us. For Mother's Day, we should give her much love and big hugs for her. You're right, when she was sick, she asked for a big hug, so I think that's what we should do for Mother's Day. That's also why I made this big poster for my mom and all the mothers around the world. Dear Mom, Happy Mother's Day. I hope you have a good day. Despite the coronavirus and everything that is going on, today will be fun. I also thank you for taking care for me and loving me. Happy Mother's Day! Happy Mother's Day, Mommy! We want to give you this love tribute for all the things that you do for us daily. We love you and you are special and you're the best mother ever. Love from Bailey and Sydney. Happy Mother's Day, Mom! And we love you and you're the greatest mom ever. Mom, how are you doing? Well, we're here. We appreciate everything that you've done for us, and we love you very much. And we just have some a few stuff to say for you for Mother's Day because we love you so much. Thank you for all you do, and we appreciate it. Also, Mom, we love you very much, and um, we hope you have an amazing Mother's Day. We appreciate everything that you have done for us. We love you. We Thank all you, love Mommy, for loving me taking care of me and always being there for me and taking me fun places and I love you very much so I did thank you thank you for all that you do for me thank you for giving me all that I really need right now and helping me to be the person that I am right now teaching me all this stuff. Thank you for helping me with my, my schoolwork and my homework and all that other stuff. Thank you, Mommy. Love you. Bye. Happy Mother's Day. Mother's Day. To the best mom ever. <laughs>
friends that have helped me with today's service. Have a happy Mother's Day, and kids, remember to do something special for your moms. And happy Mother's Day. Hello, boys and girls, and welcome to Berea's Children's Corner. We are so Village. Glad. Berea's Village. Children's Village. <laughs> Today is Mother's Day, so I want you to have a seat and relax and enjoy the show. The children are taking over. I was angry at God for letting this happen. My me-focused life was shattered. I was afraid I was going crazy. I was exhausted from trying to hold it all in and act like I was okay. I felt completely lost. Resentful that life was going on like normal for everyone else. I was lonely, scared of my new normal. I had an intense longing for things as they used to be. Was this pain ever going to go away? I lost my husband suddenly and we had three young children. I lost four family members in six weeks. A miscarriage halfway through my pregnancy. Several friends in high school and more recently my father to heart failure. And I got the phone call that my mom had taken her life. And I just um, will never forget that moment um, in time. Everything just froze. I really felt like things were in control and I had a good handle on everything. I quickly learned that I wasn't in control of anything. My head was in a fog. I didn't know where I was. It was so completely opposite of everything that I knew and trusted and loved about God. I couldn't find that hope. I didn't feel that closeness with the Lord. Why have you chosen to take my brother who loved you so much? When I started the grief recovery program, I really didn't want to be there. I didn't want to be the girl who needed to go to something like this, and I didn't want to share my pain and cry in front of others. It had been 13 years at that point uh, since I had lost my mom, and I felt like I was going to walk into a room, and there were going to be people there who had a really fresh loss, and I would be taking something away by walking in with my old loss. When I got there, though, I was made to feel so at ease that I could express myself and get it off my chest. That what I experienced was common with other people. And man, that was freeing. It was so freeing to find out that I wasn't just crazy. I could put that burden down for a while. I could be honest. Maybe let a little of the crazy out. <laughs> the freedom to, to forgive my parents for, for not being around. As, as, as silly as that sounds. I used to think that time would heal wounds. And time doesn't heal wounds. Grief never really goes away, but it can be turned into something different, and that something different can be hope. Because now I have tools to work through it and to go to the Lord immediately and lean on Him. Lamentations 3.32 says that though He brings grief, He will also show compassion. And yeah, I was, I was grieving and it wasn't fun, but at the same time, he was there and he was sitting with me in my pain and he had community around me. Feelings of loss that bring us together and help us to support each other in ways that bring us outside of our situations to a greater understanding of the bigger picture of what God's trying to do. Jesus tells us there's going to be many troubles in this world, but to take heart, I have overcome the world. I can take the next step. I can do the next thing. And I was relying on myself, the power of one instead of relying on the power of the one, that I could find true recovery. Through grief recovery, I found that it's not so much about death, but it's about life. Greetings on behalf of Pastor Omar Javis and the Berea Family Life Ministries Department. Suffering the loss of a loved one can be a difficult experience. You don't have to suffer alone. Join the Berea Family Life Ministries Grief Support Group. To register, call us at 617-752-1227 or send us an email at bereagriefshare at gmail.com. Thank you. May God continue to bless you and know that we care.